Hey everybody, George Weber here, G Weber Arts. We're here in the cave, and today we've got a little something that we're going to try to do. I've got uh, an Atherin Blue Box kit here. It's a little Santa Fe caboose, and we're going to try to light it up. So we'll be right back and start on that. All right, so let's take a look at some of the components that we're going to be using on this build. And... Uh, I've done this before, but it's been a while, so hopefully this will go well. We have, uh, obviously, some little bits of red wire. Uh, these were salvaged off a, uh, a switch from some thing. I don't even know what it was. I don't remember. Um, then I've got a couple of resistors. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use yet. Uh, we've got... A potentiometer and that's got three poles on it three legs on it as you can see and then we have a um, bridge rectifier a nice little tiny bridge rectifier we have our LED of course uh, this is a pretty bright white one we have a capacitor whoops that went flying we have a capacitor here and that's going to be part of our stay alive circuit so that if for any reason we run across dirty track or if there's interruption in the power for some reason, uh, the capacitor will keep the LED lit for a few seconds. Uh, and that, this one is a 12-volt uh, capacitor, and it is... Where does it say it? Uh... 1,000 UF. Okay, 1,000 UF. Uh, the resistors I'm not sure of. I can't remember what they are exactly. Uh, then I also have a little plastic collar that I've made uh, because I want to... Well, I'll explain what the plastic collar is for in a few minutes. Then I have the base weight that comes with the, the train kit, and I've drilled out the center of it. And uh, there's a reason for that, too, which I will get to in a little bit. Then I have a pair of electrically conductive trucks. These are made by KD. They are uh, the 590s. And uh, these are pretty nice trucks. You know, KD makes some pretty nice trucks to begin with. And these are, have a, a pre-built electrical uh, pickup system on it uh, and realistically I could have built my own electrical pickup system for a lot less money but uh, I've done that in the past and it's such a big headache it's better to spend 20 bucks and get yourself a pair of these to be, to be honest then we have the f belly of the caboose and on the belly, what I've done is I've drilled a, two small holes just outside of where the trucks sit so that the wheels won't interrupt the wire to feed the wire through. Then I've drilled a larger hole here in the center. Now, one of the first steps you need to take when putting these trucks on is uh, the stock trucks that come with the kit have... The, a space for this nub whereas these do not so the first thing we need to do is take my little micro saw here and we'll just trim this nub off and we just want to get close to start with it doesn't it's not too important we don't want to cut into the base but we want to get rid of that protruding nub so we just want to cut it until we can just kind of get it to come up and come off. There we go. And then we'll just take our file. And that'll smooth out that base. Now we can put the trucks on and they'll fit the way they're supposed to. All right, so... Let's start with that, just because that's a nice, simple step. Get all this excess wiring out of the way. We're going to get that position. 
and pull the wiring down through if I can get a hold of it. Where is it? It's under my finger. There it goes. Now these are self-centering trucks, so the trick is, with these is, is to get the self-centering part to actually sit the right way so that the mechanism actually works and doesn't jam up the truck, which sometimes they want to do when the uh, little centering piece is not sitting in the right angle. And I'll show you that in just a second here. I just need to get that down a little bit. And then we want to take a little screwdriver. Now down in here, there's this little gizmo that fits down inside this space. And when you're screwing the screw in, it tends to turn, but it needs to be aligned across the frame. So in order to do that, what I usually do is stick a screwdriver in here, get it positioned, get the truck positioned, and the screwdriver locks that in place to some degree, and then I just tighten up the main screw a little bit like that, and now it's centered, and the truck moves freely left and right. <laughs> Pretty simple, really, just a pain in the butt. And get this wire to go that way. I'll show you the lug here in just a second. We're going to drop that in place like that, and we'll pull the wire through. All right, so here's what that little lug looks like, if you can see it. It's just a little tiny thing. It's not very big. And what it has is these little side pieces that are triangular. And they fit inside another piece down inside the truck. And it acts like a cam, so to speak. And that's what helps get the truck to center on itself. So when you pick it up off the track, for instance, or whatever, the truck attempts to center itself. Now, that works much better when it doesn't have electrical wiring attached to it, needless to say, because the wires tend to want to pull the truck slightly left and right. All right, we got that in position like so. Put our little screwdriver in there like that. And you can do this without a second screwdriver. It's just a lot easier with one. At least I think it is. Get that to come around just slightly. Let me tighten it up like that, and there we go. All right, so now our trucks are on. We flip this over, and we're going to just snug up our wires a little bit, not too much. And you can see that I've positioned the wires just ahead of where the wheels meet the frame so that when, the, when this turns, it won't get caught up on the wiring. The wiring is connected right where you see the spot, solder spot, so it pretty much is a straight line off there. I could have drilled the holes further back and had the wire go straight down, or straight up as once you flip it over, but if I did that, the wire would be very short, and I felt it would constrict the movement a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. So I did it this way, and uh, it just less resistance. All right, so we flip this over. There's our wires. The reason for this hole is because I'm going to put the collar on here and glue it in place. And then once my metal 
weight plate is in place, the potentiometer will get attached to the top of this collar like that. And what that will allow me to do is to reach up through the bottom of the frame and adjust the poten potentiometer, which will adjust the brightness of the lighting. Most of the uh, lighting will probably be reduced considerably by the resistor just to start with, but I don't know how much, so we're going to find out. So let's start by taking a touch of super glue. If I can get it open, there it goes. And we'll put just a couple of little dabs. Just doing a little quick cleanup there. All right. Then we're going to take our wires and need to clean that up just a little bit more so that my two-sided tape will stick. Then we're going to take our wires and these outside holes, the ones out here, were already drilled into the base plate, the weight, uh, the weight plate rather, so I thought I would make use of them and run the wires up through them like that. And that gives us our basic position. And then, if I can find it, I have it here somewhere. Oh, there it is. We're going to take some of this two-sided tape and we're just going to use this to hold the weight in position as opposed to gluing it down. That way, if I ever need to take this apart, it won't be too hard to do. And you're just going to flip it over. And we'll put one right there. Get it centered. And put one right here. Just press it down like that. All right. Then we line up that screw like so, and that tells us that's aligned, and that's aligned. Pull this wire up a little bit, press that down just gently. And now our weight is inserted and stuck down, and that's gonna stay. So we're good there. Okay. So I'm going to be back in just a minute with more of this. Uh, I just need to prep up the electronics a little bit, and we'll get on with it. All right, now that we've got our components laid out, well, I shouldn't say laid out, they're just here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to test everything to make sure everything is working as expected. Uh, LEDs, as you may or may not know, the long leg is the uh, positive side and the short leg is the negative side. Unless I've trimmed these, then that would be backwards. And this should be pretty bright unless I've trimmed it, which is possible. Yep, it looks like I may have trimmed these prior for some other experiment. There we go. I have the <laughs> I had the wrong lead. It's not the one off my battery pack. 
that's pretty bright. Okay, so. So there's our battery pack, and that's very bright, as you can see. That's a, just a 3-volt battery pack, so that's way too much. If I hook that up to the track power, it would burn that LED out in nothing flat. So let's try it using this resistor and see what it looks like. And hopefully I can do this. That's pretty dull. It's not very bright at all. Let's try this resistor and see what we get. That's much brighter. I think I'm going to use this resistor, which will allow me to use the potentiometer much better. Because if I use this one, this one's already so dull that I wouldn't have a lot of adjustment before it was literally turned off. So, that being the case, we're going to use this resistor right here. And I am going to trim the leg on the resistor here. preparation of soldering it on. So let me get my helping hands here. Here we go. Get that spun around just like that. Grab our solder. Our soldering gun is nice and hot and I'm going to tin the leg of the LED first. Then I'm going to tin the resistor. Just like that. And then we're going to attach the two. And we're going to test it again. One thing you always want to do is always test your circuit as you're building it because at any time you could wind up with a cold solder joint or something like that and it's not going to work. Okay, so we're back. Um, I put it all together off camera because this, the bits are just so fiddly that it, it would be a very, very long video of watching me trying to solder these things together. So I will just explain it, uh, which is just as easy. All right, so. Okay, so as I mentioned in the video, uh, watching me try to solder together a bunch of little tiny fiddly things and trying to explain it at the same time uh, would have made for a very long video. So I'm just going to explain the circuit here on paper. It'll be much easier to follow along. All right, so some of the items we have is our train power supply, which is generally 16 volt DC. They say it's 12 volt, but the actual output can be as high as 16. Then you have power going to your track. And you have a direction switch, left, right, 
forward, back, however you want to look at it. When the switch is set in one direction, your track is positive and negative. But when you throw the switch in the opposite direction, these also reverse. Now an LED can only take power in one direction. As long as positive is positive and negative is negative, it will work. But the minute you reverse that power, if you put negative into the positive side and positive into the negative side, the LED doesn't function. It doesn't light up. So this is one thing that this circuit keeps from happening. The other thing we have to take care of is the fact that we have a maximum output here of 16 volts at as much as possibly 2 amps and an LED that works on roughly 3 to 4 volts, maybe 5 on the outside, and not anywhere near 2 amps. This is another thing that this overall circuit attempts to handle. One of the final things that this circuit does is if our track is dirty or if there are some sort of other interruptions in the power momentarily, in a normal situation, the LED would go on and off, on and off. It would flicker. Every time there was an interruption, it would, the light would flicker. So we're eliminating that flicker by adding a capacitor. Okay, so here's our circuit, and here's how it works. We have track power, positive, negative. We have a potentiometer. Potentiometer has three legs, one on the outside, one on the outside, and one on the center. We want our positive power to come to one outside leg, our negative power to come to the other outside leg. Then we have a bridge rectifier. A bridge rectifier will frequently show a positive and negative symbol on one side and some other symbols on the opposite side. One special note is to the positive and negative side are generally the output side, so that's the side that you want facing your LED. Now your potentiometer connects by the outside negative leg going straight to the bridge rectifier. The positive input does not. The positive input comes from the center leg of your potentiometer. So now you're adjusting the amount of voltage here. The bridge rectifier is correcting the voltage in terms of positive and negative. So if these reverse whenever you flip the forward and reverse switch, the bridge rectifier is correcting it and always putting out positive and negative in the same way, no matter what's happening on this side. It's also putting out only a certain amount of voltage. The next thing you want is <clears throat> your resistor connected to your long positive leg of your LED. Your resistor has a gold stripe frequently and that generally wants to be pointed towards the LED. 
the amount of resistor you need for an LED can vary based on the type of LED and the color of LED and how much voltage the particular LED can handle. In our particular situation, because we're only dealing with 16 volts DC, generally speaking, 1K uh, will of um, resistance will usually be sufficient to keep the LED from burning out. Now you could make use of the formulas of Ohm's law and figure out how much resistance you need based on the current and other factors uh, of the, your particular LED and get much closer uh, to having the proper amount of resistance for your LED, but usually 1K is more than enough, and sometimes it may even be too much. So now our positive leg has a resistor, and then the resistor's positive leg, because that's in line with the positive leg of the LED, goes to the positive side of our bridge rectifier. The negative side of our LED goes to the negative side of our bridge rectifier. What that means now is this circuit, no matter which way the polarity he here is, the polarity here will always be the same, meaning that our LED will always stay on. Now, to keep the LED from flickering during bad continuity, we want to add a capacitor. You need a capacitor that can handle at least 16 volts because your output here is 16 volts. A nice large capacitor of 1000 to 3000 microfarad will be able to power this LED long enough for most instances of dirty track. And it's a simple matter of, again, connecting negative to negative and positive to positive. The one thing you do want to do, though, is make sure that you connect your capacitor prior to your resistor. And that's pretty much it. That's our flick, flicker free light circuit. That's a, that's a mouthful, flicker free. Try saying that three times fast. Anyways, that's it. I hope that was helpful. Uh, I'll leave this diagram here for a second so you can look at it over and um, we'll get on to the next part. So first, I look at the trucks and I can see that there's no insulators on these wheels. So that's my power wheel on this side. So that's my positive. And I actually have the trucks in backwards. It realistically, if I was doing this correctly, the positive should always be on the right side. But because I have the bridge rectifier, it really doesn't matter. So. Outside wheels on that side, inside or outside wheel on this side, I should say, is our negative, and the further back wheel on that side is our positive. And then we can put on power, we turn up the power, and you can see that the LED lights gets pretty bright at full power, it's pretty bright. If I turn down the power, the capacitor will keep it live for a few seconds. See how it fades out slowly. If I turn the power on and change directions, it doesn't affect the light because the bridge rectifier is keeping the power positive and negative regardless of what's coming into it. Positive and negative is always coming out on the other side in the correct order. Now, 
We're going to turn this up to full power, so that's very bright. And then we're going to reach up inside here to our potentiometer. And if I can find the slot in the potentiometer, that's half the battle, I should be able to turn down the brightness just like that. So now I can adjust my brightness to whatever I want it to be. I can turn it way down to almost nothing, or I can turn it up, and then I can adjust my power output on my power supply for what my train would normally running at, which is, let's say, 45%, and then adjust my light output so that it is however bright I want it for that amount of power coming into my train. And I kind of like the looks of that. That's not bad. Turn it up just a little bit. That looks pretty good. All right. So now that we've got that done, I'm going to set the body in place. I'm not going to lock it down because I still have to do painting on the body and whatnot. And we're going to put it on the track and see what it looks like. So we'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so I've turned off pretty much all the lights here in the, in the cave. And I'm going to turn off the final light. And I have my flashlight here. And we're going to take a look at how my little caboose came out. So I'm going to put the flashlight down over here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to spin the camera around like so. All right, there's our caboose. And again, keeping in mind the body isn't locked down completely, so there's going to be a little light leakage right at the moment. But here's what we've got. So what do you think? Once the windows are all put in and everything, that's going to look pretty good, I think. For the absolute best effect, I probably should have two LEDs in there uh, in order to spread the light out more. But I don't have any uh, strip LEDs. Uh, and I only had one small white one left. Um, all the white ones that I currently have that are bulb types are uh, like 13 millimeter. They're just gigantic, and that would be way too big and way too bright to uh, look like. But as you can see, that car is just sitting there. It's not moving. It's not doing anything. And if I turn the power up and down, the lights will fade away slowly instead of just going completely off. And if I turn the power all the way up, it will only light up as far as I've allowed the potentiometer to put power into it. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, give it a like and a thumbs up and uh, maybe uh, subscribe to our channel. And uh, hopefully we'll have more videos in the future with more cool stuff. See you then.